Hello and welcome to Facebook Live with Dime. And Eileen is enjoying some time off. You know, it is summertime, so she will be back. But today I am going to be your host and I have a great co-host today. And that is our lead educator here at Dime, Ashley Jones. And she is going to join me here to uh, not only show you today's uh, product and project, but to also give us that September reveal for the small town charm. So that's really going to be a lot of fun to see that because, you know, hey, it's the last Thursday of the month. And that is our tradition here at Dime to do that reveal. And it's really a good one again this time. So you're going to enjoy seeing that uh, <clears throat> near the close of today's Facebook Live. But right now, let's welcome Ashley. And hi, Ashley. Hey, Deborah, how are you today? I'm doing well. Of course, I'm in Dallas, but Ashley's down there in uh, Key Largo, right? Yeah, sunny Key Largo today. So we actually uh, have gotten a break between the rain. So so yeah, it's nice to be able to um, come to everybody from all over, right? Exactly. And we do have people from all over, like uh, Deborah from Orange County, California, and nice. Carolyn from Goodyear, Arizona, and and uh, we've got Gold Hill, North Carolina. We've just got people from from all over all joining, over. as is usual, because yeah. you know uh, Eileen uh, has fans and followers from everywhere, as does Dime. So we are are going to do some really uh, neat stuff today. And Ashley, I know you have. Uh, got that September small town charm, but we're not going to lead with that. We're going to wait <laughs> until the end and make make uh, people be in suspense. I don't. I know no one even knows what it is yet. So right, so right. That's, yeah. that's going to be really fun to see what because I've got all of these small town charms up here behind yeah. me: the cake shop, the dress shop, the, the town hall, the flower shop, the uh, sidewalk cafe the ice yes. cream shop, you know, they're all so cute. And so yes. we've got, an, oh, in the gazebo, you know, was the yes. last one. And so many people got really creative with that one. And uh, I, I have some favorites of some of yep. the ones that yep. we saw from what people have done with the gazebo. So right. we really have a, another great one for, uh, for today. So yeah, I agree. And I think everybody loves embellishing those. I bet it's really hard because Eileen, of course, I'm revealing it, but Eileen still created it. I'm actually oh, honored sure. to, to reveal it for her. But um, I am certain that she has a hard time not adding all the embellishments. You know, she leaves that blank area <laughs> for everybody to add their own personal touch. And even, you know, as I was stitching mine, I thought the same thing. Oh, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do that. But I wanted them to see that uh, this is the way you get it and you can always add your personal special touches. So I'll have to make another one and add all my special touches to it. <clears throat> right. Well, you know, we, we do have, uh, uh, Sue, who has her Sueville version of the yeah. small town, you know, so we've got uh, people that are following a theme throughout the whole year. So anyway, mm -hmm. Ashley, today, what we're going to be talking about is a cool project. And, you know, this yeah. this uh, trend of bag making is really you know, it's been popular for quite a while, but I think we're reaching a point with it where people are really taking it seriously and, 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 you know, want to create uh, at the next level with these bags. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked about this before, Deborah, embroidery machines. Um, they are, you know, the perfect tool to make that precision stitching and you get those repeatable results because every single time you push start, you're getting the same thing every single time. So using your embroidery machine to help you in your bag making process, you know, some part of it being in the hoop or all of it being in the hoop, you're getting that perfect design every single time. And now I love perfection, Deborah, but I'm sometimes too lazy to actually reach that point. So <laughs> my machine though, on the other hand is a workhorse and it always produces uh, perfection whenever um, I'm all said and done. 
Well, and predictable perfection. So, <laughs> yes. So that's great. Yes. Rita says, I love, love, love making bags. And, you know, oh, Rita, good. you know, it is so much fun. And it's, and, you know, that with you're using the right tools, it's yes. so much uh, easier and so much better. So thanks for sharing right. that. Right. You know, uh, this this bag we're going to make today is one that anyone can make, Ashley. Yes, it is. Um, there's something in this kit that we're revealing today um, that's for every level of embroiderer. So not to mention the detailed instructions um, that you're going to get, but the different types of techniques that you're going to learn all in one collection is really what uh, makes it unique. Well, and I have to say, you know, uh, I, I have enjoyed making this clutch and it's, it's really so easy and it goes so mm -hmm. fast. You know, uh, I see that Cheryl McComb says, I too love making bags, mostly Yay. zippy bags, but can't wait to see these. So yeah, this is different than a zippy bag. Uh, mm -hmm. And it can be, it can be used for very casual or really dressy, you know, so a right. clutch, of course you carry, you know, to the theater or out to dinner, mm -hmm. but you could also just make it super casual. And in fact, yeah. uh, the, the one we're showing today is the vintage uh, clutch collection two, And yeah. that it has got a real casual feel to it, right, Ashley? Oh, absolutely. But I feel like it can actually be um, both, depending on the base fabric. I mean, I could really see, um, you know, the applique version done on some, uh, you know, silky filling fabrics or something, you know, maybe a, a cotton that has a sheen to it, you know, to really dress it up a bit. But not only just um, a, a bag for carrying, like you said, to the theater or whatever, um, I use this actually inside a larger tote bag that I carry like on a regular basis. So then say I'm getting out of the car and I just need to, you know, take in, um, you know, a small amount of stuff just to run an errand. I can grab that out of the larger bag and it's easy, you know, holds my phone, my, you know, a little small uh, wallet or some cards or whatever, just to go get the job done and not having to carry my entire bag. So it really is versatile um, for a, a clutch even though it's not, you know, a little zipper bag, it's still a versatile um, kind of bag to have on hand. Very good point. And, you know, you can uh, just throw some lipstick in there, uh, yeah. uh, you know, or, or cash, you know, right. I mean, some people do still <laughs> use cash, believe it or not. Ashley. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, Janet Rowe, I love this comment. I'm called the bag lady. So she must have some experience making bags. I'm just guessing, you know, I think that she, I think that she probably uh, is doing some bags already. And if you're not, you don't, this is a great project to start with, yeah, I think, absolutely. because, you know, I'm really not a bag maker, but this, ba this bag project, is super easy and a great one to start with. So yeah, and it. we've got some ideas for personalizing today too, Deborah, that I'm going to oh. share. Oh, well, that's even better because, you know, uh, personalization's always uh, big with me. I like making things like they come, but if I can right. personalize it so much, the better. So, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what you have to show us about how, about this, this project. Okay. Well, sounds good. So let's get to it, guys. So this is our vintage clutch collection too that we're talking about, but I want to first talk about just bag making in general. Um, if you've never done uh, any sort of bag with your embroidery machine, here are some of the reasons why we absolutely love doing this. Um, bag making in the hoop, you can do things like duplicating corners. So these corners on these bags that you see here are actually <laughs> applique in the hoop. Um, so they're perfect. You don't have to worry about getting, um, you know, your placement wrong. It's perfect every time in the hoop. Um, you can also use your embroidery machine to make handle anchors or this gorgeous tab closure. Again, decorative and perfect because your embroidery machines do it. So accent stitching is something else that uh, you can get done with your embroidery machine. Um, and that precision stitching, not just for the corners or the accents, but sometimes we have an actual pattern that is stitched in the hoop. And that's what we're going to be showing today because this stitch is a pattern. And not to mention, you're getting a beautiful focal point with that decorative stitching anytime you do something in your embroidery machine. And that's exactly what I feel 
like we got with this collection. So this vintage clutch collection that we're referring to um, is the collection of these three designs uh, that you see here and of course all the instructions, but it actually comes in a little kit that uh, Deborah is going to do a little unboxing for you later. Um, so this collection, what makes it unique is the designs itself. So these designs use a combination of both 15 weight embroidery thread and 40 weight. And I'm going to give you tips for stitching with that uh, chunkier thread. Um, but this, the 15 weight particularly, but the type of digitizing that was done on these clutches really mimics a type of hand stitching. Um, but of course, more perfect than what our hand stitching used to be. Um, but it, this uh, set also teaches layered applique. So if you're new to um, embroidery and you haven't done applique in the hoop, um, this is going to teach you layered applique. But I'm going to show you a tip for um, getting that perfect fussy cut of your fabric to fit right in the middle of an embroidery design. So that's coming up in a bit. Um, and then the nice thing about these patterns and using your embroidery machine, so we give you an embroidered uh, pattern cut line, so it actually stitches the pattern in the hoop, but it also stitches a seam line for you. So do I have any people out there that are not the perfect stitcher and you have a hard time keeping your seam straight? So if that's you, and it certainly is me from time to time, Deborah, um, I like having that seam line to follow along. So, and um, this design, all of these actually, because of that 15 weight thread fills in, it actually stitches out really quickly. Um, so the design designs that you're getting are these three designs that you can make, but you also get the clutch lining. And I'm going to show you how you can personalize that lining. But that's also the opportunity to um, create your own outside design. It's the same pattern for you to be able to uh, create. So this hand stitch look, I want to start here. So look at that uh, thread that's in use there. That's a combination of 40 weight and 15 weight thread. So that thick 15 weight really does make a, um, a really cool effect. And this is digitized to accommodate that 15 weight. So let me show you that thread that was used in this set under my camera here. So when we're talking 15 weight thread, guys, we literally are talking about a thread that is thicker than our normal weight embroidery thread. So this thread here is our normal 40 weight embroidery thread. This thread, um, we refer to these as our vintage embroidery thread because they have a matte finish. Um, but the 40 weight thread can actually be used in any embroidery design in place of your regular embroidery thread. Even though it's matte finish, it's the same exact weight. And designs are digitized based on the weight of the thread that you're using. So this 15 weight thread, look how thick that is. We refer to it as a rope thread because it has a really cool twist to it um, that uh, looks like a rope almost. But you can definitely see how thick that is compared to the 40 weight. And we're actually uh, stitching with that in our embroidery machine. And it's uh, really a unique uh, look that we're getting. But now this 15 weight thread. So here's a, the uh, uh, tips for stitching with that thread. You want to make sure you use a needle that has a larger eye with that 15 weight thread. We um, recommend a 116 top stitch needle, which actually comes in your kit. And I'll show you that. Um, and this thread, you have to have a design that's digitized to accommodate it. The only time I would ever use this um, in an embroidery design that's not uh, meant for the 15 weight thread is maybe a run stitch design. So if you've got a run stitch design that has a um, stitch length of say a 3.0 or longer, you could use this thread. But let me tell you what else I use it for. I put it in my serger. It makes a beautiful overcast or um, if you have that wave stitch option on your serger. Also top stitching on your sewing machine. So if you like bold top stitching on your sewing machine, then this 15 weight thread is great for that. So that's just some options. So tips for using this would be make sure you're using the right needle, an extra large eye, so like a top stitch needle, and uh, also slow your machine down just to give it time to form those stitches nicely. And I do make sure my thread is sitting, um, you know, vertical too. So it just makes it uh, nice and easy, it spools off the top, uh, just like this on my vertical spool pin right into my machine. And I have no issues whatsoever. And it's really gives you a cool look, something else that, uh, uh, our regular embroidery thread doesn't do. So what do you think about that thick thread, Deborah? Isn't that cool? 
Well, you know, Ashley, it is so bold. It has a lot of texture, but uh, 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 we have a viewer that's asking when using the 15 weight thread, do I need to adjust the tension, Ashley? No, uh, you don't have to adjust the tension at all. And you're just going to use your regular embroidery bobbin works perfectly fine with that 15 weight thread. But no, no machine adjustments um, other than just slowing your speed down um, and then uh, making sure you've got a needle with an extra large eye. Those are the two main ingredients for making sure that this is going to stitch well. Okay. Yeah. And you know, Sharon says, and understandably so Sharon, she says always confused because 15 weight thread is heavier than 40 weight. <laughs> it seems backwards. And doesn't it seem backwards? You know, that that's true. But you know, because you know, if you think about our needle sizes, the bigger number is a heavier needle, but with thread, right. the bigger number is a lighter thread. So that's, that's very true. I can see how you're, uh, thinking could be a little, uh, you know, convoluted there, but, uh, yes, the 15 weight you see there on Ashley's table, just how much thicker it is. Uh, now here's a, here's a couple of questions we have Ashley that we want to address. Uh, and Aretha asked, do you use it in your bobbin or 40 weight in the bobbin? So if you are, uh, if you want the same color in both, I would put the 40 weight in your bobbin. Um, and if you're using it in your serger, which I've done in the past, I put the matching 40 weight in my needle thread and I put the 15 weight in my loopers. Oh, that's really, that's really yeah. clever. Now, uh, Colleen asked, would this work with machine red work? Um, yeah, absolutely. Just make sure that your embroidery machine designs don't have really tight stitches. So if you're doing a uh, red work embroidery design that has a lot of fine detail, I would not switch it out um, because it uh, would be too tight for that thicker thread. So you want to look for a design that has a stitch length of about three um, uh, millimeters for your stitch length if you want to just swap this out. With okay. your well, that's a great yeah. tip, Ashley, to knowing that you need that distance between those needle penetrations yes. to uh, accommodate that thicker thread. That's a, right. that's a great uh, number to keep in mind, three millimeters. Yeah. So, uh, so, okay. So uh, there you go. Oh man. When you bundle <laughs> it up like that, I know there, you can really see isn't, the difference. Isn't so, it? You this know. is so bold. Look how bold that is, uh, Deborah. just, you know, kind of wadded up like that. And so that brings up another good point is when you embroider with this uh, thick thread, it really shows up better on your pattern fabrics. I know we all love our pattern fabrics, but our embroidery designs sometimes get lost in the mix. But having a design that uh, uses this bold thread really does uh, show up really nicely on a pattern fabric and it still stands out. Absolutely. I can definitely see that that would be the case. So let's go ahead and, and go to the next part of your, uh, your uh, project. Okay, perfect. So um, the next design in the Clutch Collection, uh, the Vintage Clutch Collection 2, um, is the Waves design. Now this design uh, talks about or, or teaches you um, doing layered applique. So if you've never done a, a layered applique, this gives you the instructions to do so and the instructions that come with the collection, um, which is another great learning tool. Again, you get a lot of education in this one package here. Um, and then this, I love this close up because you can really see um, that bold stitching. Look at those green leaves, how uh, bold that is with that 15 weight thread. I just love that. And that flower is actually a fussy cut flower. So take a look at this. If you've ever wanted to fussy cut um, a design to fit right into um, your embroidery design that you're already doing it, whether it's a flower or some other shape, um, printing a pattern of your design and then cutting out that opening and then positioning that over your fabric gives you that perfect idea of, you know, that placement of that, uh, that design that you're trying to cut out of your fabric. So that's a really easy way to fussy cut to make sure that you get that exact part of your fabric that you want. So now uh, let's talk about personalizing these clutches. And then I'm going to show you the details of stitching together. But this is actually my favorite part is the fact that with our embroidery machines, of course, we can make anything that is personalized. But that's the beauty is that if it's personal, it's an even better gift. So in this case here, 
here. This was a wedding gift that um, Eileen created. You can see the outside uh, of the clutch there was embellished with, um, so this is just the blank clutch pattern embellished with that lace um, fabric there. But look at the inside. She personalized uh, the inside with the words, I do and a date. So I just love, isn't that awesome, well, Deborah? It like, is awesome. So and I want to I want to stop right there for a minute, <laughs> Ashley, you know, uh, because imagine all of the cool things that you could uh, embroider inside on a lining. You know, I mean, of course, it'd be great for personalization with uh, initials or, or yeah. something as well. But for graduation, for wedding, for just about any special occasion, you could put some really neat messages embroidered right on the back. But hang on a second. Let me ask you this. If you sure. were going to do that personalization, Ashley, uh -huh. now you wouldn't necessarily have to do it in the vintage thread, right? But no. uh, Nope. Sorry. That's I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the quite, Oh, here it is. Uh, what density is suggested for satin stitching with this heavier thread, Ashley? So the, the designs that we um, actually use for this thread are a particular kind of stitch. It's not just your satin stitch. Um, and so, but if I were you, if you wanted to test it with your satin stitch, so the stitching that we do is called a whip stitch, which is built into um, Dimes software. And that already has that preset density. But if you wanted to try it with your regular satin stitch, I would, for one, I would start by testing. I would create just a, a satin stitch that maybe is just a column stitch, you know, the letter I or something like that, or, you know, even an O or whatever, remove your underlay and then open up your stitches. So increase your density, which is that space between your dense, your stitches. I would start by say, um, you know, doubling it. So our traditional density is about like a one point or a 0.4 or 0.5 for our satin stitches. So doubling that to like a 1.0 and then test. That's the biggest thing. I don't know that magic number off of the top of my head, but I would open it up because of the larger, uh, the larger thread and then look and see what you're getting when you're stitching. So start by doubling your base density remove the underlay. That's very important because these stitches are much looser with that heavier thread. You don't need um, all that underlay um, that we normally do for our regular satin stitches. So that's a, another tip if you're digitizing for the 15 weight thread. So, And I completely agree. And, you know, depending on your software, that might be a 1.0 or it might be a 10. It just depends yeah. on if it's expressed in points or uh, millimeters. Now, uh, or it could be an eight, you know, we don't know. Right. You're going to have to test, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, uh, Seth Sweets wants to know how big are the clutches, Ashley? I think in there may be eight or nine inches wide. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say is, you know, maybe like roughly about uh, five or so tall and about, you know, eight or so a wide from the very widest points, um, on either end. Yep. And, you know, we also have a question about what's included in this collection because people are already getting excited, but we're <laughs> going to hold that up for a little bit. You'll see what comes with it in just a little bit. So, and uh, so let's, let's continue. Okay, so let's talk about another uh, personalization. Like Deborah said, you certainly can add um, initials or a little design on the inside of the bag. And you can use that, whatever design you're creating or you're adding, maybe from your embroidery machine or from your software, um, you would then use the thread that you had created that design for. But look at this. What if you printed a photograph? Um, you know how they make that photo uh, printer fabric that we can yes. feed through our printer, Deborah? Isn't that awesome? Oh. Oh, Since yeah. these are, um, you know, you would be able to cut that out of a eight and a half by 11 that you fed through there. You could print a photograph and line the fabric with that photograph. Would that not even be so much better? And look at this. Look at those adorable little oh, faces. Love Isn't it, that love so it. cute? Oh, it just pulls that. at my heartstrings, right? Now, so, actually, whoops, wait. Now, yeah. Here's a couple of more, a couple of other questions that we should do while we're right here. What size hoop are you making this clutch in, Ashley? A six by 10, I'm pretty sure is uh, what size hoop it will take. So I have a okay. little video in just a bit that'll remind me of the size, but I'm pretty sure six by 10 is what, uh, what they'll need. And then, uh, oops, sorry. 
the, <laughs> this thing moves kind of fast sometimes. Uh, yeah. We have another question of, uh, of uh, what are the frames in stock to buy? Uh, I don't know the answer to that one, but I'm assuming so because we yeah. um, have those at our event and I haven't gotten any word that they're out of stock, Deborah. So yeah. I would make the assumption I, that I we're feel, good. Right. I feel sure we have them. The, the photo lining is really getting uh, some great. I know, right? I know. I love that. Isn't that adorable? I yes. mean, you, you could just do so much. And like you see here, this is a plain outer fabric, no embroidery. So really just with that one collection and that, that lining design, as well as the stitch designs, you have so much versatility um, that these really could be for, you know, any gift, like you said, any occasion for um, any special uh, lady in your life. Well, and you know, Ashley, I, I think you've made the point already, but let's just be clear. You can use any fabric and any yes. design on the, once you have this clutch pattern, you right. can make whatever you want with it, right? Yep, absolutely. And that's what I was about to show here. This is our um, embroidery tool shed. Um, and in our embroidery tool shed, I've got my uh, Perfect Embroidery Pro features here. And so all I did, Deborah, now you can do this at the embroidery machine um, if you've got text built into your machine. But what I did was opened the blank lining, which then would allow me to add any embroidery design that I own or if I wanted to personalize it with text. And so I just used um, our built-in text tool to put a little um, uh, motivational message, which I think would be great for a gift too. Yes, you can. Every time you open that clutch, you see that motivational saying. Um, and so it's really that simple. So I just selected a text to add and changed it. And now to stitch this, that outline um, is my pattern. So it's going to stitch that outline, but then it's going to stitch my text um, as well. And I've got that personalized uh, lining. And like you said, if I don't want uh, any text or any design, then by using this pattern, I could make it out of plain fabric or, you know, maybe a specialty fabric as well. So absolutely so you know great great uh tips and ideas and everybody uh really loves the personalization yeah. aspect of this so let's see what else you've you've got on this project okay absolutely so we'll see the unboxing in a bit but just to show you how simple this is to do um you're gonna basically hoop your base fabric whatever you want your exterior of your bag to be and if you want to stitch one of the designs you will have selected that design on your machine you stitch that in the hoop and it stitches the outline as well of the the pattern and that second line that you see there is the stitching for your seam so you actually have a line to follow to get that perfect stitching um, and then the second step is to do the same thing with the lining so you've got your stitched outer bag and you've cut it out um, you stitch that lining pattern and cut that out so um, you've got two outer and two inner pieces um, and then it just requires a very minimal sewing um, to put this together so for the clutch lining um, where the red here you stitch these little parts this is all illustrated in the instructions um, and for the outer bag you're going to stitch that bottom one full uh, length stitch there because we're going to use this opening to turn the bag inside out. Um, and then from each of those, the outer and the lining, you stitch this little uh, section here to close up the end of the bag. And then when you place the two together, you're going to be sewing all the way around the lining and uh, the insert of the bag. And we've got a video. Eileen's actually going to show you um, that part and uh, the pressing part, which is really important. But then after that, it's a matter of just inserting that... Um, clutch frame and the clutch frame uh, like we mentioned it is sold separately it is a particular size for this bag so make sure you get the six by three clutch frame fits this collection but then just with a uh, fabric glue uh, Deborah and we just slide that into place and Eileen actually has a tip on her video if you have trouble getting that in just top stitching that edge down makes it so so simple so we'll see that in just a moment so um, for the vintage clutch this is what's in the uh, kit and then Deborah's going to show you this live in a moment. Um, you get the design collection, which includes the four decorative ones and the blank lining. You get the vintage thread. So there are five spools of the 15 weight, which is what you need for the different designs. And there are um, 
uh, sorry, seven spools. I lost my train of thought. Seven spools of the 40 weight. And when you open this up on your embroidery machine, it does tell you uh, the 15 versus the 40 weight on the design. Now, because we know that you need a particular needle to use that 15 weight, we actually included a pack of the 116 top stitch needles in this kit so that you'll have um, everything that you need except for that clutch frame. So we have these um, different designs that come with it. And remember, they stitch as little as possible possible in as little as time as eight minutes um, and you've got that blank lining and it's perfect for any level embroiderer so if you're advanced you're learning a new technique um, if you are a new uh, embroiderer then you certainly get uh, a lot of education from this one project so um, that's the pictures of the thread that you're getting those colors um, in each of those weights um, and again Deborah's going to show you that and your needles now I've already mentioned this but just to reiterate for the 15 weight thread slow your speed on your machine and make sure you use the appropriate needle. So that 116 top stitch needle included has a very large eye to accommodate the uh, thicker thread. It reduces the friction on the thread with that larger eye um, than our, our normal size needle. So, and that is the uh, the vintage clutch collection. Now um, I'm gonna go over the supplies that you need to get this done so you can collect everything that you need. But then before we do that, so Deborah, I think this is a perfect um, place. If Do you wanna do the unboxing of oh, the that. let me go over to the camera ashley and okay, uh, sounds good. we will take a look okay so uh here are the actual samples of those beautiful clutch some people had asked in fact uh uh norma kaufman was wanting to know uh the size norma you can kind of see this is just a normal size little clutch like you would carry or like ashley likes to put inside her tote so you can you can certainly see the sizes there but here uh i've got the box and i'm just going to set these uh aside for a minute so we can look at the uh contents of the box so there's the way the threads come. And of course, you've got the pack of needles. There are five needles in there. So that should be plenty for you to make a bunch of clutches with. And in the box, there is the, uh, the project itself. So uh, this um, gives you the designs and of course that important lining design because that's what you're going to use if you want to do other designs on it and of course your your uh serial numbers and so forth so this is uh what the contents of the box contain so don't overlook your card it's going to be un underneath the box of thread uh and it's a just a beautifully uh presented collection and what a great uh, kit to have uh, but it's not just uh, a great kit. It's also a great price, right, Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. So the special for uh, that today is $39.99, guys. This is a normally a $59.99 item, and we have that on special for $39.99. So, yep. um, so yeah, a smoking deal, right, Deborah? That's and you get the a, thread and the needles. To me, that is an unbelievable deal because <laughs> you're getting 12 spools of thread in addition to the right. design. So to me, the design, I mean, the thread's practically uh, free. The designs are, you know, really uh, worth that much, in my opinion, because that you're going to use them over and over. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And the design, you know, being so versatile, I mean, we've already talked about so many things that you can do with just that one collection. Um, even if you see one of those designs, you stitch once, you've got that versatility with the uh, lining to do so many other options. So, so yeah. And, the, and, you know, Christina asked, are there frames in the kit? No, those are separate. So you are going to buy the the frame uh, separate. So that is, uh, you know, and, and it does come just with the thread at, at, at this time, right, Ashley? Right. We don't offer the, the designs the, alone, but. Right, yes, yeah, so the design um, is with the thread kit, yeah, at this time. So, and I have a list of the other supplies that um, we use. They're not all necessary, but um, I've got that coming up and the clutch frame was on that to not to forget to grab your clutch frame. So, okay, yeah. right. Well, well then, uh, uh, do you have a supply list handy? 
Yeah, I do. So let's do that. So for your vintage clutch, so these are the uh, things that uh, we recommend you using, um, but not all are necessary. Now you do need the clutch frame. So we don't provide that in because, well, for one, you could make as many of these as you need. So you'll have to buy as many clutch frames um, that you want to make clutches. Um, so you do need that. That's an absolute must, but other things that you're going to need. So um, in the instructions, you're going to be using a fusible no show stabilizer and a soft tear away. So we are fusing the no show to prep the fabric that is going to make sure that it has a, a nice body to it. You could also use um, uh, other products if you um, prefer, but then the soft tear away is what we stitch on. So the soft uh, tear away is um, it's not your crisp tear away uh, stabilizer because it's the soft tear away. And Deborah, tell me if I'm right. It's, it's got those long and short fibers to give you a little more um, stability than our crisp tear away. Is that correct? Well, right. It, that's right, Ashley. And it also contains more polyester uh, than, than a normal tear away. Normal tear away is mostly cellulose, which is what paper's made out of. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we've got more polyester in it. So it's going to hold up for you to, to stitch on uh, for this project. You're good. And you, you know, you would, it, you might as well pick some up anyway, because it's just a fabulous uh, stabilizer to have right. in your arsenal. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I use that one more than the crisp tear away. I like that it gives me a little bit of extra stability um, uh, as a tear away. So, and now we used our dime snap hoop monster for this stitching. So if you have a snap hoop monster, it works great for this. Again, a six by 10 um, is the size that we uh, use to stitch this project. Um, it, if you don't have Snap Hoop Monster, you can do this with your regular standard hoop. It works either way. Um, and then your embroidery needles. So for this uh, project, for your embroidery needles, um, I used my regular 7511 for the um, most of the stitching, except for when you're using that 15 weight thread, I switched to that 116 top stitch needle, which is included, but then your regular embroidery needle that you normally use for uh, the 40 weight thread and then to stitch that uh, pattern layout. Fabric glue. Fabric glue is what we use to um, glue the frame onto the purse itself. Um, so that is really a personal choice. Me personally, I have used um, E6000. I've used Aileen's Fabric Fusion. Um, and there's another, I don't even remember the brand, but you want a, um, a permanent fabric glue. That's what you're, you're looking for when selecting your uh, glue. And I'll give you a tip. Um, select one that has a narrow or a thin nozzle because then it's easy to drop that bead of glue right into your frame. So a narrow tip is good. And you see uh, Pamela's question is how difficult is it to place in the frame and does it stay in place? It's really yep. uh, pretty easy to get in there. I, I taught this in a class and it was everybody got theirs in there pretty yeah. easily, but it surprisingly does, uh, it stays in place surprisingly well. And that's, a, that is what Ashley's talking about. You know, you want to use a good glue, but if you yeah. use a good glue, you'll be amazed. It, it, it is, uh, it's in there. And if you think about it, that's how all these are made anyway. These frames aren't unique to uh, this project. And, uh, you know, we love J Janice's comment that she's made all the first collection and they look okay. great. And Norma, yes, we do sell the clutch frames. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yep. so. Yeah. On the DZGNS website, if you su search, I'm not sure why it doesn't come up when I, when you search clutch, but uh, search frame. Um, and then it'll actually bring up, we have two size frames and you want the six by three. So search frame um, and then it'll come up the two clutch frames that we have. So. Uh, and, and Rita asked, do you sell the glue and the soft tear away? We don't sell the glue. Uh, we do have soft tear away. Yep. Yep. So, and same thing. I think you could just search that, uh, tear away and that will come up to, uh, the stabilizer and then make sure you get that one that says soft. So, yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and so we have, uh, <laughs> we have had, uh, uh, designs in the past that where you you didn't get the thread, but in this case it is a kit, and that is is a it gives you all of the threads, and these are unique designs. One of the thing reasons we're providing the thread is because this 
set of designs is made specifically for this thread. So it's a yes. Kit. Absolutely. And remember, I just said when we were talking about the thread under the uh, camera, you can replace the 40 weight thread if it calls for 15. It's just going to be a much more open uh, design, but you cannot put 15 weight thread where it's asking for 40 because it not, you know, if it's not digitized for that, you'll have a mess. So, so don't uh, <laughs> interchange both directions. It's kind of a, you know, one direction of uh, substitution there. So, um, but the other items that we have here for our supplies, sewing clips are super helpful. You're about to see a video of Eileen putting it together and she uses sewing clips just like you see in the picture here to hold the front flap out of the way when she's inserting the frame. It just makes it really simple. So, so that's a good easy tip. Um, and of course our clips are great for, you know, sewing our pieces together too, but that's a, um, a really nice one and a point turn. So I'm sure that most of you guys have something um, to make those nice points, but just something to um, insert into the bag to push out your corners um, makes those really crisp corners. And then you'll need, of course, fabric for the exterior um, and the lining. And then if you're doing a one of the two that has an applique, then you'll need applique fabric. And Deborah, I can guarantee that everybody out there probably has already that supply item in stock, right? They all have some <laughs> fabric that they can choose from from, do you think? <laughs> I think you're probably right about that. And look, Retha found the soft tear away on the Dime website. Oh, Great price too, she says. Good. So, that's, so good. That's, a, that's a good, that's good to know, Retha. Good. Well, Ashley, so uh, this looks like a fun project anyone can yeah. do. And thanks a lot for showing us not only, uh, you know, what you need, but I think yeah. we are going to see how the project goes together, right? Right. Yeah. And so Eileen's going to be using the totally tubular pressing station. And so we have um, her showing you how to assemble and do the pressing. And that is another tip I can give you. Pressing matters. It makes really nice, crisp seams and creases. And so, yeah. So let's take a look at Eileen um, finishing this off and using the totally tubular pressing station. Um, yeah to get that uh, pressed and put together. Okay. In the totally tubular pressing station box, you're going to find three boards, three inches by 13, one and a half by 13, and a six inch by 13 inch board. You'll also find three plates and one post. It's the post and plates that make this product so versatile. To assemble the top, simply slide the post into the opposing plate. Pressing mats are sold separately and are a great add-on purchase. They're cut to size to fit the boards. In this vintage clutch two, I'm going to press open the bottom seam of the lining and it most certainly does have an opening as you can see, those, all of those details are included in the instructions. And then we'll repeat that for the outer bag. On the outer bag, you'll notice the outside line is the cut line and the inside line is the stitch line. These are really helpful marks for uh, bag making. And then we'll just press open this seam. And the next step is to sew from the corner to the notch. And we'll do that now. To box the corners, we'll just slip the corner over the narrow board and then give it a press, pressing open those seams, allowances. And you know, it's that hard wood that gives it a really nice crease and creates the structure for the bag. And now we'll go to the machine, matching these seam allowances and box the corners. So now that I have my corners boxed on my outer and lining, I just insert the lining right side to right side of the bag. And I'll pin and sew on that stitch line that was incorporated into the embroidery design. So we have our lining sewn into our outer bag and we sewed from this notch all the way around to the other notch and the same on the opposite side. We'll turn the bag, berth the bag through 
the opening and the lining. Now, truth be told, we should trim this seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll, especially those corners, because we do need to trim them down so that we can get it nice and flat. Eventually, it's going to have to be glued into the frame. So this is the only area that you really have to trim. And you could clip those curves if, if you so desired, but it's, uh, it's pretty simple. These little clutches are just adorable. And we'll trim the other side. And now we'll turn it right side out. So we'll just pull that lining around the bag, pulling the bag out. Do this carefully. You don't want to split any, any seams. And then that lining is going to go back inside the bag. I love the feel of this bag. It has so much texture with all these beautiful stitches. And they're long stitches, beautiful long stitches that really uh, stitch up very quickly. And the finishing touch is uh, pretty exotic. I like it. Now, I most certainly could get a point turner and put that inside to smooth that top corner, those edges there. But this is also where the edge of the wider board, the six inch board comes in very handy. So when I press right onto this hard wood, I get a really crisp finish because you know, I want that to be nice and flat. That has to slide into the metal frame. It is eventually glued in there, but we have to get it in there. And then we'll repeat that on the other side. And I'm just going to use my fingertip to smooth out those curves and Let's take a moment to do that. It's these steps that really make the bags appear to be so professionally made. What a lovely bag to carry to really pop with, you know, maybe a, a plain outfit, even all black if you carried a bag like this, really uh, is a lovely accent, lovely fashion ex accessory accent. Okay, so then we can shape the bag a little bit more by flipping it over to that narrow board. And now I'll put that corner on here. Now, maybe I didn't do such a good job with the stitching right here. I could go back to the machine and add in a couple more stitches, or I could do it by hand. But I know from past experience, when I glue the frame on, the hinge of the frame is actually gonna cover that. So it's not gonna be visible. I don't really have to worry about it. And you know, these kind of bags are the bags that you carry, you know, like evening bags, right? You don't have uh, any heavy items in it. So they're just small accessory bags. But there you have it. Then we'll add that frame and there's our beautiful clutch. Isn't that adorable? I can't wait to carry that. Let's see. I went to the sewing machine and sewed that lining closed, that opening, so that's all set. Now we'll add the frame. What I like to do is fold back one side and clip it down and then take the clutch and open it up. I drop a bead of glue all the way around, all the way, one bead, continuous bead through there. And then I just insert the bag onto the frame. It takes a little bit of wiggle, a wiggling, but it works out really well. You'll be surprised. You don't think it's going to fit, and then it does slide right in there. Now, if you are having any trouble getting it into that opening, edge stitch the clutch right at the top all along here, and that will flatten out the seam and allow the one side of the bag to slip into that lining just perfectly. And there you have it. So once it's glued, you'll then allow it to sit for about 20 minutes, and then you'll repeat the same process for the other side.
Wasn't that awesome? I, so I, I, I love so it. Simple. So well, simple. you know, the thing about watching that video is it really uh, outlines the whole process and lets people yeah. know they can do it. Now, here's a great tip from jo Joanna Hoffman, who says these clutches would also look lovely with hand beading. Do it oh, prior yeah. to sewing in the lining. So after the embroidery, before you sew the lining in, that yes. would be a great time to put some beads on there. Wow. And they would go great. I with love this that. Red. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Or embellishing the embroidery with beading too. That's another great idea. So thanks, Joanna. That's amazing. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So Ashley, that that's a great project. Thanks for walking us through that. Yeah. And I know, you know, we've got a lot of people here and some of them <laughs> have just joined. So I know they came in for something for a reason, right? Because they want to see the September reveal of the small yes. town charm. Absolutely. So I'm excited to share with you. So if we have any newbies out there, do we have anybody that is not stitching the small town charm? Um, so let us know in the chat. But the small town charm is a project um, that Eileen creates every single month. She uh, creates a different design for your town. So we've had a variety of different ones. All of these are free to you. You can get them from our uh, dzgns.com website. If you search small town charm, you can get all of the past for the year. Um, Eileen started in January with what is my favorite, Deborah, and that's the quilt shop. I mean, that's what we all love is fabric, right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, and then we had February, the sweet shop. Isn't that adorable? Cake superior. <laughs> um, and then we had for March, the dress shop. And um, as we go with these, um, if you're new to this, not only do you get this free design, but we want you to personalize it and then uh, let us uh, see your personalized small town charm uh, with the hashtag Dime So Along. Uh, so get the small town charm, personalize it, and then uh, show us what you've done. So the April was the flower shop. Um, we had May for the outdoor cafe, perfect as the weather was starting to change. And then, of course, every small town needs a town hall. Um, and then, of course, an ice cream shop. Another one of my favorites, uh, the, all the cakes and candies and ice cream is what I love. Um, and so then August was a gazebo, which is perfect for summer. Um, also, this one, I think, was one of my favorites because it gave the most opportunity for personalization. And that's what these are designed for, is to um, allow you guys to add your own special touch. So um, September. That's what we're reeling today. So does anybody have any guesses of what September actually is? So uh, Deborah, how long should we make them wait? Like 10 or 15, 20 minutes or so? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, we would have a small uh, riot on our hands. So yeah, a village. Uh, we would have a small town of angry people, right? Oh, okay, so. Sarah, Sarah's making a, a guest of pet shop. I love and that. Uh, Steph Sweet says a maybe library. a library. Yeah. That's so Donna, close. Barton, That's close. Donna Barton also guessed a pet shop. Colleen and some others are guessing oh, wow. uh, schoolhouse. So lots of guesses. Oh, love it. Love it. Here. Okay. So, well, September, some of you guys were pretty close. Um, September is actually a bookstore. Is that not so cute? Um, so again, designed by Eileen, um, just revealed by Deborah and I. Um, and so, and Eileen did her um, normal, amazing amount of creativity and again, left you lots of blank space for you to personalize. So let me go through the steps for um, uh, stitching this. Now you get just as you always do guys, a five by seven and a seven by 12. The seven by 12 fits on the stand that uh, dime sells for the small town charms. Um, and then the five by seven and the seven by 12 have this pretty much the same uh, stitching this uh, week, this month. It's just a difference in the awning for how you're putting that on. So your steps are just as you're always used to, but let me just go through them for um, any of you guys that are new. So you need to prep your fabric that you'll be stitching on. And then um, it's a really good idea to 
prep your applique pieces with your um, Fuse Me uh, fusible web that we have that just makes the applique pieces um, around the edges nice and crisp and you can also fuse them into place. So you'll prep your fabric and you'll hoop your base fabric and then you'll stitch the placement line for the sidewalk. Um, and then next comes the detail of the sidewalk and then um, you will trim away the excess. So this is all um, in the hoop applique. Um, once you've done that and you put it back in, you're just going to stitch that finishing uh, satin stitch around the bottom of the sidewalk and your placement for your building. Now, all of the sizes are in the instructions for pre-cutting your applique pieces um, and also uh, the information for prepping your fabric. You want to use the Fuse So Soft on your base fabric uh, that you're stitching your design on. So then with that tack down, you'll place your building fabric of your choice and then uh, do that tack down and of course we'll trim that excess away there. Um, and then the next stitch detail will be the detail of the building um, uh, for uh, the next stitching. And then also the placement for the door. So it'll do the finishing stitch around your building, the nice satin stitch, and then the door placement. Place your door uh, fabric there and then stitch that tack down. Trim away the excess as usual. And then um, it does that nice finishing stitch around the door. And then it also at that time does the placement for the window. You'll tack, you'll put that placement for the window. Now I chose my window to be kind of like the background of the store, but maybe it's the background of your shelves. So that's up to you. Um, and then of course you'll trim away that excess. Um, and then it stitches the shelves uh, onto the window fabric. And then the books. The books are my favorite part because I wanted my colors to match my awning. Now, when you guys see my awning, I designed my entire uh, small town charm around the awning fabric. So I picked that out first and everything had to match. So stitch your books, stitch the book labels, and then comes the detail of the, uh, the name. We have the book nook, but certainly that's a, a area for personalization. And then that little door handle uh, there. And so that finishes the main part of your building. And then you have options for the awning and the basics with the awning. If you're new to this, um, you're, the embroidery machine is going to stitch your two layers of fabric together in the shape of the awning. And then you'll be trimming away um, around and through the scallops. And all these details are in the instructions. Um, and then you'll turn and press and then you'll attach that uh, to your small town charm building, uh, the method of your choice. So look at my awning fabric. Deborah, that was my favorite part. When I, 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 know, I, oh, I, love it. I saw your sample, I said, I love that awning. Uh, yeah. and, and of course, part of the fun or a lot of the fun of making these small town charms is choosing the fabrics and, yes. and uh, putting it all together, you know, so, and then right. of course, you know, when you've got all of them together, like I have behind me here, it's really a cool thing to see how they all, you know, right. kind of make a patchwork just like a real town. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, that's the fun is picking out our fabrics, using from our stash, which is always good. Um, but then adding uh, personalization. So if you guys are new to this, we want to see your personalized um, book nook or whatever you name it. So add your own special touch and then post it online using the hashtag hashtag dime so along and then each week we find um, your special creations and share them on Facebook live so you'll see uh, some of your um, designs pop up um, and so definitely share with us we love to see them and um, have fun embellishing right Deborah absolutely now Ashley I do want to uh mention a couple of things. One is that a lot of people have asked, you know, uh, where to buy the clutches. And I did put in the uh, chat uh, the link. So go find that if you're, if you aren't, haven't found it. And also uh, the, uh, the free shipping uh, uh, link for the kit is also in the chat. So uh, it, the free shipping link is, um, just WQ2021 to get free shipping. So you can put that in your order and you'll get the free shipping. So uh, that's for the kit. And of course, the uh, uh, 
Small Town Charm is a free download as always. Yep. So, so you can download that. That is in the chat also. So this uh, link where you're going to download your pattern, which is absolutely free and jo join in the fun. You know, often at the end of the, the event or the uh, Facebook Live, we show uh, the ones that we've gathered that all of you have made. And of course, we're at the end of the month. We've gathered some this month and we've shown them, but we didn't find any this week. So we want you to use that hashtag, uh, which is Dime Sew Along, all one word, just hashtag Dime Sew Along post your creations to your, your social media outlets uh, and we will be detectives and we'll crawl through the internet and find them. And then we'll share them with you uh, each week here at, uh, at our Facebook live, right, Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, a, it is fun. So show us your creativity. We love sharing and others like to see what other people are doing across the country um, as well. And so I just assume everybody's out enjoying the summer, the last bit of summer, Deborah, and that's why they're not stitching their uh, small town charms. Oh, maybe. Well, we did yeah, we did find lots of, of people. Who yes, before. Their yeah. Uh, but we're, we're right here at the uh, end of the month. So uh, yeah. it's, it's, it, it, you know, uh, Sarah's looking forward to see people's uh, everybody's yes. bookshops. And so we will, and you know, the, the, uh, uh, we had many comments about people loving the bookstore. One was a, from a, a former librarian and so forth. So really, really cool. Now, you know, here's a question from Retha where she says, do you have additional software to add the cute embellishments? Well, you know, Absolutely. <laughs> we do have additional software. And of course, that is at our Inspired by Dime site. So you want right. to take a look there and download our free uh, tool shed uh, yeah. software that is there. And it's got a lot of capability, right, Ashley? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And if you already have some of those uh, small designs that you just want to add in, it does give you the ability in our free embroidery tool shed to merge two designs together um, and, you know, move them around in the, the stitch sequence so that you can get it to stitch in the right place. So yeah, that's a great place to start um, and be able to personalize your design, especially if you already own some little miniatures that you want to add. Absolutely. Well, Ashley, it's been a wonderful uh, time sharing all of the tips you have about the clutch and how to make it and get it. And Eileen's great video on how to put it together. So uh, now um, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure whether Barbara is asking what will work in a five by seven hoop, but certainly the small town charm yes. will. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The small town charm five by seven and a seven by 12. So you, you've got a lot of versatility there for your hoop sizes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank everyone for joining us today. We are going to have another great uh, Facebook live next Thursday <laughs> at one o'clock central time. And we hope to see you then, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everybody for being here. Can't wait to see your bookstores. So uh, go download that design and uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.